Hi, everybody. Happy Saturday. I'm recording this word right now. It is uh, 5.26 p.m. on Saturday. Uh, I just got in not too long ago. Still have a quite a few, a quite a few, a quite a few. Make that make sense, Christina, really. I still have a few um, errands that I needed to run, but I came home. I know that this is a now word. Um, so I'm going to release this word really quick. Um, and God is so good because I was uh, literally thinking about this word as I was driving home and just like all the things that the Lord has showed me today and just like confirmations. And I'm thinking about this word. And as soon as I got home, well, no, actually, before I got home, I had, I was listening to, I was actually talking to a friend on my way home and I got off the phone with her and I didn't put on any music or anything. I just kind of um, rode with the windows down and just let my thoughts, you know, take me away. Just let me think and, you know, sit with myself, sit with God, just sit, sit right? And when I got home, I had went to my YouTube and a sermon from three years ago was posted by Pastor... Uh, Bronner, Pastor Dale Bronner, and I love him. Like he is so amazing. He keeps it real. He preaches from the word. He's not going to sugarcoat for you. Uh, I just, I love Pastor Bronner, but a sermon was up from three years ago and the sermon, um, he was discussing snakes, right? And I knew the Lord was speaking to me loudly because the dream that he gave me involved snakes. Um, and what, it just made sense. So I actually, before I even got on here to release the word, I watched the sermon and I see why God wanted me to watch the sermon because in the midst of me watching this sermon, again, this sermon was posted three years ago, um, but God always knows how to get a word across. And he gave me a lot of nuggets that made me understand um, one of the verses in the Bible a lot more. And even though like the, the sermon... I, I I know what the dream means. Like the Lord has already interpreted the dream, but the Lord just knew these extra nuggets would just like bring it home and shed more clarity on this specific verse in the Bible. And I never quite looked at it like this, but I love Pastor Bronner. He is amazing. I think he's in uh, Augusta, Georgia or some part of Georgia. Um, but anyways, I just finished watching that and I was taking notes, just sitting on the carpet in my living room on the rug. Uh, taking notes on this sermon, but I know that this is a now word because of the time. And you guys will understand more about uh, all of this. I'm not sure what this word is going to be titled. Um, so it, whatever, it, whatever God leads me to title it, um, as I'm posting the word, that's what I'm going to title it. But uh, the Lord is saying they are aware of the deceptive spirits operating around them they now have no choice but to move and a time frame has been given, okay? They are aware of the deceptive spirits operating around them. They have no choice but to move and a time frame has been given. A lot of the times when God is telling us to do something, there's a time frame attached to it, right? He's not, if he's telling you just like a parent, clean your room. Clean your room, clean your room. They're only going to tell you clean your room so many times before you're either going to get slapped with fire to your face or some part of your body. You're going to be on punishment. There's going to be consequences. They're not going to keep repeating themselves. And we have to look at God, even though he's all of our first husbands, whether you are a man or a woman, he is the bridegroom. Okay. So we have to look at him, not as just a husband, but as a father. So when God tells us to do something, there's a time frame often attached to that thing. But let me stay on track. Uh, this word is geared towards um, prodigals. <laughs> um, and a prodigal is someone that chooses to exhibit wasteful living outside of the will of God. Make no mistake, a prodigal is not someone who chooses to walk away from a marriage with you, okay? It has nothing to do with you. Their husband whether you're you're standing for a husband or standing for a wife, their first husband is God. It has nothing to do with you. It's all about saving that person's soul and them being in union with God. Okay, God has to make a man out of that man before you can make a husband out of him. Okay, God has to make 
a woman, a Proverbs 31 out of that, that woman before you can make a wife out of them. Okay. So it's all about their union and their heart being drawn back to God, not drawn back to you. And I think it annoys me when I see so many people using prodigals loosely. And a lot of people literally think a prodigal is a prodigal because they choose to divorce you. Negative. <laughs> okay. A prodigal is a prodigal, just like the prodigal son. Just like uh, Apostle Paul was a prodigal before the Lord anointed him, knocked him off his high horse, and he had a choice to make. Apostle Paul was a prodigal before he was Apostle Paul. He was killing Christians. He was persecuting them. He was walking outside of the will of God. He was a prodigal. The prodigal son was a prodigal. He chose wasteful living over living for God and walking in the will of God. That is a prodigal, okay? So the Lord is saying they are aware of the deceptive spirits operating around them. They have no choice but to move in a time frame has been given, okay? Um, I had this dream on Thursday, which was April the 11th. And I'm, I'm probably not going to go deep, deep into details about it because as I've been doing with every word that I've been releasing lately, I give you guys a brief overview. I give you guys part of the interpretation that the Lord put on my heart. And it's your job to take that word back to God and let him give you more. Okay. But understand me. And I really want you guys, I feel this heavily on my heart. Stop just commenting. Oh Lord, send my prodigal home. Da, 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 da. What you should be saying is Lord, draw their heart back to you. Because if you're on the edge of a seat just because you're wanting God to send a husband or a wife back, your issue is way bigger than just your weight, <laughs> okay? This is not about you, nor is this about a marriage. It is about a marriage, marriage between that person and God, the union between that person and God, that person's soul being saved. And the only person that does that, has done that, it's, it's done, is God. This is not about you. Yes, God ordained marriage, if you're a wife, there's a certain level of favor that that husband gets when he comes home and he's you united with you. Absolutely. He who finds a wife finds favor. There's a certain favor door that will not be open for a husband until they get in union with who God has for them. Not for you guys who think you know who your husband is and you're clinging on to this person. Da, da, da. The person that God has for them. Okay. So I had this dream April 11th. And um, in the dream, the Lord used my ex-husband and I was at my ex-husband's house and I remember him packing up his house. His house was pretty much packed up. Everything was in boxes. And I was like, um, actually, I'm skipping ahead. Sorry, Lord. I was at my ex-husband's house and we were outside. It was nighttime. We were in the front yard, but nothing was... Uh, off about it being nighttime. Like I didn't feel evil or anything, right? It wasn't like nighttime. Me being outside at nighttime with him didn't scare me. Y'all better catch that spiritually. So we're outside because I know a lot of people look at dreams. And they're like, oh, it was nighttime. That's bad. That's not necessarily the case all the time. Um, that's why it's good to let God interpret your dreams. But I wasn't afraid outside, even though it was like really dark. There were stars in the sky. Like it was dark outside. And... I was standing up and he was laying in the grass. And as he's laying in the grass, this big snake began to crown his head. So the snake's body was like, almost like trying to go around his whole head, but the snake's body was like curved uh, to the right side of his head. But I knew that the snake was gonna go around his head. It had started to come up like around his head by the right side. So it was kind of like trying to make a crown around his head with its body, right? And I'm seeing the snake on the right side of his head as he's laying in the grass talking to me. And I tell him, I told him to just get straight up. I was telling him, don't look to the left, don't look to the right, just get up. Because I knew in the dream that if he looked to the right side or made any sudden movements, that snake would strike him. So instead of telling him, there's a snake by your head, oh my God, da, 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 or screaming or being crazy, I just looked at him and I said, just get right up, right? I was telling him, don't look either way, just get straight up, right? And it's like in that moment, the snake turned into a big black dog. And we took the dog and we walked it back to the neighbor's house because we knew this dog was... um 
this dog belonged to my ex-husband's neighbor. So we walked the dog back to his neighbor. And when I walked the dog back to the neighbor, or we walked together to give the dog back to the neighbor, this neighbor had so many different animals, cats and all these animals. So we gave her the dog, right? The scene kind of switched to now it's like daytime and I'm walking in his house and I go back to a room that he's in and there's a bunch of moving boxes in this room. And I'm like, you're moving? And he's like, yes. He's like, I'm moving. I said, um, when are you moving? I'm, I'm like, I was kind of confused because I'm like, how did this happen so fast? Like, how did you already put your house on the market and do all of this? This is what I'm thinking, but I wasn't saying out loud, but I'm like, how is he moving so fast? That was my, my like thought, like how, what? Like, this is your house. How are you moving? Cause it literally seemed like in the dream, he was packed, moved, packed, like his whole, his whole house was packed within an instant. That's how it felt in the dream. Like it was suddenly. So I'm like thinking, how did he, how did you pack so fast? Like, where are you moving to? Like, this is going way too fast. But I didn't say that. I just asked him, uh, when does he have to be out of that house? And he said in the dream, he said, I have until Sunday to be out of here. I have until Sunday to be out of here. And that was the end of that part of the dream. Or that was the end of the dream. That's all I'm going to give you guys. There was more to it, but that's where I'm going to stop. He said, I have until Sunday to be out of here. Mind you, this was April 11th. Okay, so God is very strategic because Sunday is tomorrow. And that's 414 for such a time as this. So I noticed that as soon as I woke up and got myself together and came to my desk, um, Thursday morning after getting the dream, I was like, what is Sunday? I wasn't even thinking Sunday was 414. I was just like, what is Sunday? And I realized Sunday was 414. And all I got in my, my spirit was for such a time as this. He's been called for such a time as this. Okay. And we know with Esther's for such a time as this, God gave her an order. She had to move quickly. And there was a time frame on her movement. And if she didn't rise, help was going to come from somewhere else. But her and her her father's house, okay, it, it, everybody was going to perish. Okay? Everybody was going to perish. And he's, let me, hold on, guys. Hold on. Because I feel led to read this. And I know the verse, but... Okay, Esther 414, I'm just going to read from the NIV version because I feel led. And of course, we all know Esther 414. I could have just quoted it, but I wanted to say it verbatim. Um, so for if you remain silent, silent is no movement, right? <laughs> when we're silent, we're still. Okay, so you could also see this portion if you remain still, okay? Meaning you need to move. For if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place, but you and your father's family will perish. And who knows, but that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. The um, NLT version says, if you keep quiet at, at a time like this, Deliverance and relief for the Jews will arise from some other place, but you and your relatives will die. Who knows if perhaps you were made queen for just such a time as this. Translation, what the Lord was speaking to her, even though the Lord's, the Lord's name isn't mentioned anywhere in the book of Esther, the Lord God was operating all throughout the book of Esther, okay? All throughout of it, make no mistake. What the Lord was pretty much telling her through Mordecai was if you don't move on what I'm giving you on the task that I'm moving you to do, that I'm telling you to do, I'm going to raise another helper to take care of what I need. Because don't you know God will raise another? Nobody's disobedience will stop God's plans. So the Lord was speaking basically through Mordecai, telling him as he's relaying this to Esther, like you've been called for such a time as this, but if you remain silent, if you stay still, if you do not move, the Lord is going to raise another helper, another deliverer to help the Jews. But not only you, you and your relatives, those related to you, they're all going to die. All of you are going to die from your act of disobedience. So choose wisely. That's basically what Esther 414 is saying. 
So I knew when I woke up and I got to my desk because I work from home and I looked at the calendar, I said, oh, Sunday is 414. Now, one thing I told you guys many times, God does not give me many time frames for things. Like I could count a handful of times where God gave me time frames. But every time God has given me a time frame in a dream, it's been that exact time. So I knew in the dream when my ex-husband said, I have until Sunday to move, I knew the Lord was referring to 414 this Sunday. Whatever God has going on over there with him, I don't know what God is, what God's converts out of, but whatever God has going on over there with him, and you guys will get more from this dream. And it's not just for him. This is for prodigals. God used my ex-husband in this dream to symbolize a prodigal, someone who uh, exhibits wasteful living outside of the will of God. Okay. And like my ex-husband, he may be a prodigal, but God has allowed him to be successful in many different areas. He's allowed him to be successful in many different areas of his life, but now he's being called for such a time as this. The Lord allowed um, Esther to be successful and win the king's heart. Okay. And she was called for such a time as this. And I knew God was saying there's a time frame on what he has told these prodigal men and women to do. There's a time frame. And if they don't rise to the occasion and move, uh, he'll raise another. He'll do whatever he needs to do. But this is not God asking them to move. They have no choice. My ex-husband said in this dream, I have until Sunday. Meaning Sunday, tomorrow is the deadline. They are being called for such a time as this. And every time God has given me, when I was applying for this job to work in Israel, the Lord had given me a dream that week. And on the dream, I saw promises over a set period of dates. Um, it was September of 2022. And he had put over a set um, group of dates in September. He had wrote the word promises over these sets of dates. And I saw it on a calendar in a vision or a dream. So when I woke up, I knew that they were going to offer me the job within those sets of days, and they did, okay? The Lord gave me a dream last year in the beginning of October, and in the dream, my ex-husband was telling me, um, I'm done with this relationship, like, I'll reach out to you in a week. A week from the day of that dream, my ex-husband reached out to me via uh, Facebook through Messenger a week from the date of that dream. So, and that, those are just a few examples. But when God gives me a time frame or a date or something in a dream, that thing comes to pass. Okay, it's rare that God tells me a date or a time frame or something. It's rare. Like I said, I can count on one hand, but every time he has given me a time frame by this date in a week, whatever, anytime he's given me a time frame, that date has came to pass. So I knew to take Sunday tomorrow, 414 to heart and be like, okay, God is literally like, this is the deadline for many prodigals across the globe. This is their, their deadline. There's no choice. There's no, you can stay or you can move. No, it's you're going to move or I'm going to move you. <laughs> you're going to move or I'm going to move you. Okay. So let me go. I wanted to give you guys that background because it's important. So, um, and that's why I knew I needed to release this dream today. Um, because this is for many people in whatever situation. And this is not just for no marriage. Okay, this is not just for marriage. So take this however God speaks it to you. But in the beginning of the dream, uh, we were outside. It was nighttime. I'm standing up. Catch that spiritually. I'm standing. <laughs> He's laying in grass. Okay, catch that. If, if you caught it, you caught it. I was standing. He was laying. Y'all caught it? Okay. So as he's laying in the grass, it's like I'm standing not over him, but I was standing to the side of him and I was looking down at him and we see this snake. I see the snake on the right side of his head and I knew the snake was trying to crown his head, like to kind of make its body in a crowning, like around his head. And I didn't yell, snake on the ground. Oh my gosh, run. Da -da. I didn't do any, I didn't make any sudden moves. I knew to just tell him, get straight up. 
Don't look to the left. Don't look to the right. And that was my way of saying, don't make no sudden moves. Just get straight up. Because I knew he needed to get up from around that thing. Okay. And when he, when he did get up, the snake turned into a big black dog. Okay. And we walked it to his neighbor's house and gave the lady back the dog. And she had a ton of animals in this house. I'm going to translate this really quick for you. The snake and the dog represented deceptive spirits. Okay. Deceptive spirits operating around them, around prodigals. They have no choice but to move and a time frame has been given. A deceptive spirit, guys, is AKA a counterfeit spirit. Something portraying to be real and authentic, but it's really not. And it's really harmful. It's deceptive. It's a lie. Okay, that's what a deceptive spirit is. A deceptive spirit will twist itself to be something that it's not. Almost like counterfeit money, right? Counterfeit money looks real. If you go in the store and use it, some cashiers may accept it because they don't do the work. Y'all better catch this. Speak Holy Spirit. Because they don't do the work to check $100 bills and $50 bills like they're supposed to. There's a certain rules and regulations to where cashiers are supposed to check um, large bills to make sure that they're not counterfeit. You'll see them hold it up and they can see the line in between through the light. They have to hold that bill up to the light. Catch that to see if it's real or fake, okay? As we walk with God, as we're connected with God, it's really easy for someone who's walking with God versus someone who's walking with Satan to be able to spot a counterfeit. My ex-husband was laying in the grass. He didn't see no snake. He didn't see this thing slithering. He didn't feel this thing around him, but I'm standing looking right at it, okay? The Lord tells us in... um. Let me pull up the verse. In 2 Corinthians 4, verse 4, Satan, who is the God of this world, has blinded the minds of those who don't believe. They are unable to see the glorious light of the good news and don't understand the message about the glory of Christ, who is the exact likeness of God. Okay, so God's word tells us that when these people choose to walk with Satan, that's what a prodigal does. They choose wasteful living. That's Satan's way of living. That's not God's way of living. When they choose to walk with Satan, they are blinded. They do, they're they not able to discern uh, physically and spiritually anything. But when we walk with God, we can see what people who are walking in darkness cannot see. And this is why God uses us to be in places, dark places with people that are suffering to be able to bring the good news, to be able to speak the word to them, to be able to cover them. It's about saving souls. This walk isn't about us. We can't just hang with Christians and like-minded people. We This is about saving souls. The, the healthy don't need a doctor. The sick do. That's God's word. So we are to help those that are suffering, even though you may be tired. I don't want to help them. I've been praying for them for years. So God waited on you. You you were a whole heathen your whole life. God waited on you. And now it's our job to help save others. Even though it may not feel comfortable and it may not be convenient. The Lord didn't want to wait for us. He wants everybody to be on his side right away. But he waits because he's gracious and merciful. And we have to exhibit those same qualities as we choose to walk with God. So I'm seeing the deceptive counterfeit spirit around my ex-husband, right? He's just laying in the grass. Like, first of all, he's laying in a place where snakes roam, right? He's laying in a place where snakes roam in the dark. It was nighttime. And I pray that you guys are catching this spiritually because I'm not going to explain every single detail. But if you have spiritual ears, you are catching it. It was nighttime and he was laying in grass. I can't see a creepy crawly outside at nighttime in the grass. But I can if I'm able to spiritually discern. I can if I'm able to, if I'm walking with God and he's leading me. I can see in the darkness because I carry his light. So whether it's dark or light outside, I'm going to be able to see what de deceptive spirit Satan is throwing my way because I operate in the light. So the light is always with me. Even in the darkness, the light is illuminated. So I can see. But somebody who's operating in darkness and walking in darkness and, and choosing prodigal living, they can't see what they are surrounded by. And it's a deceptive spirit. 
So I'm telling him, you don't have, you don't have time to look to the left or to the right. You need to get up or that thing was going to strike him. I said, just get straight up. Okay. Again, the Lord is saying they don't have time to look, to go to the left and to the right, to bounce to and fro. It's time for them to get up. It's time for them to get up. That whole, I'm giving you a choice and da 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 and you need to walk and I'm giving you time. Like God will give you time to get it together. But there comes a time when that time frame is up. That clock is done tick-tocking. You're either going to move or get moved. And if you don't move and God's telling you to move, you ain't going to like the place he moves you to. Esther had a choice. You can either move or get moved. And you weren't going to like the place that he moves you to, Esther, because perish means to die. Often fatally. It's like a fatal death. So she had a choice to move or get moved. Not just you by yourself, Esther, but you and your family because of your disobedience. So as he got up, the snake turned into a dog. Again, deceptive spirit. The dogs are often companions. They're, they're like man's best friend, right? So it was a deceptive spirit. It was a snake operating as a companion. Y'all better catch this spiritually. And I pray that y'all are catching these clues and God is dropping them in your heart and you're putting this dream together yourself. It went from a snake, <laughs> from a snake to a companion, man's best friend. Counterfeit spirit, deceptive spirit. And it belongs to the neighbor. The neighbor represented people that are close, close to him, close to my ex-husband, close to these prodigals. That's what the neighbor represents. Friends, family, um, romantic relationships they may be in, people that are close to them that are operating in a deceptive counterfeit spirit. And this is how Satan gets through to people. He uses people to get through to people. Oh, y'all better catch this. He uses people for his evil doings. God uses people for his good doings, for righteousness, for purity. But Satan uses them for opposite. So a lot of prodigals feel like they have people that are on their side. They're in right relationships with their family member. They're in right romantic relationships. They're in all of these relationships. And they feel like this person is their best friend. They're a companion when... Actually, this person is operating, these people are operating under counterfeit and deceptive spirits. So this is their chance, their last chance to get up. And I serve as divine guidance. So I know that whatever, um, whoever God is sending back my way, ex-husband, family member, prodigals, whoever, I am to be a guiding light at this time and this hour. I am to be a guiding light. I am not to judge. I am to be a guiding light in this hour. But I also noticed, I told you guys, I didn't scream, snake, oh my gosh, run, da, 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 get up, stupid, da, da, da. I didn't do any of that. I simply said, don't turn to the left or to the right, just get up. Because I knew in the dream, if he looked to the side of the snake, he may have screamed and made a sudden move and he was going to be, um, bitten by the snake so I just told him to just get up and I could tell he wanted to like question me but he didn't question me in the dream just get up the Lord tells us in um Matthew 10 verse 16 for us to be as wise as a serpent or as wise as a snake some versions say but as innocent as a dove to be as wise as a snake but innocent as a dove, okay? I'm gonna give you some key things. God is so strategic that when I watched Pastor Bronner's sermon, again, this sermon was posted three years ago, but God spoke to me so loudly in it to explain this verse more clearly to me and um, connected it with my behavior in the dream. I was being as wise as a snake and as innocent as a dove. Translation, he's basically telling us to be smart. A snake is smart and we'll get more into it. They're intelligent. But while we're being spiritually discerned at this high level, right? 
while, while God is using us, we're also to remain humble. Hence, innocent as a dove. Some people, when God give, gives them a gifting of some sort and they're able to discern on levels that other people aren't, they start to use it for their own gain. God clearly tells us, I want you to be smart and wise as a snake, but as innocent as a dove, meaning you're gonna be wise and as smart as a snake and you're gonna use it for, for God's glory, for my glory. You're not gonna use it for self-seeking things. It's going to be a innocence and a humbleness that comes with it. And I pray that you guys are catching this. Um, number one, and these are these are things I caught from the sermon. Snakes are one body. A snake is one long body. No arms, no nothing. They're just one body, right? The Lord is saying we are to be one body of Christ. And he tells us that in his word, just like snakes, they're one long, cre creepy creature. We are one body in the body of Christ. Some may operate in the legs, the arms, wherever. We are still one body. Okay, one body, one spirit, the spirit of God. Snakes are neither good or bad. They are controlled by nature. They're created by God, right? They're, they're neither good or bad. Some people have snakes as pets. Some people hate snakes. I do. And it's the same like with a black cat. When some people see black cats, they're so superstitious. They think all black cats are evil. That's not true. God created black cats and he created snakes too. But just like uh, black cats, they act according to their environment. Snakes act according to their environment, right? They're, they're, they're ran by nature. They're ran by what's, what's around them. They, they sneak and they creep through grass because that's how they eat. They, they act according to their nature and what they are surrounded by. But a snake is neither good or bad. A snake and a black cat both created by God. Okay? Catch this spiritually. Um, we have to be controlled by the spirit of God. We can't look at other people that choose not to walk with God as either good or bad because God words, his word tells us that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against what? Darkness and principalities in high places. So we can't look at a person and say, oh, this one's good, this, one ba this one's bad. I don't have the ability to say who's good or bad. All of us are bad and sinful. We're only made righteous through God. So just like snakes are controlled by their nature, we are to be controlled by God. We are under his authority, under his control. We're neither good or bad. We're cre all created by God. Some people just choose to make other choices, but we are to allow ourselves to be controlled by God's nature. We were made in the likeness of God. So we are to allow him to control us, him to lead us, him to guide us. Uh, snakes have no ears, right? They have no ears. They don't rely on outside noise to lead them and tell them where to go. A snake does not hear noise. A snake has a certain type of uh, jawbone. I forgot the name of it, but their jawbone is connected to their skull. So with that jawbone, as they're slithering through grass or whatever they're slithering through, they can hear vibrations. So they still know, y'all better catch this. They still know how to discern when there's a person near them or there's an attacker near them or whatever the case may be. They go off of vibrations. They have no ears. So they're not led by noise and people. You should not be led by the people that are in your ear. You should allow God to give you the ability to discern. To discern means to be able to judge, not just physically, but spiritually as well. And you're not going by what you hear in your ears. Be like snakes. He says, be as shrewd, smart, wise as a snake, but as innocent as a dove. Snakes don't go by where, where people are telling them to go. Oh, snake, go, go to the left, go to the right. No, they're able to use their judgment. They feed off of vibrations. They know when someone's trying to catch and creep up to them because their jawbone will vibrate to let them know when things are around them. They don't have ears. So they're not privy to the outside noise. Catch that spiritually. Uh, snakes also have no voice. So whenever they are, whenever 
with every move they make, sorry, with every move they make, they move in silence. Y'all catch this. Because this is going to help a lot of you guys that are about to be put in a situation where you have to be as wise as a serpent and as innocent as a dove and not make any uh, rash moves. Snakes do not speak. They move in silence. It's how they eat. They move in silence. Move in silence. Wherever God is having you go, whatever he's having you do, however he's having you help this person or these people, move in silence. Don't speak and tell everything. A snake does not have eyelids. So when a snake is sleeping, their, their eyelids don't close their eyes. Their eyes literally are still open. They just have this certain kind of film that covers their eyes. But even when a snake is sleeping, a snake is still alert. Y'all better catch this spiritually. Even when you are sleeping, okay? Even when you are sleeping, your spiritual eyes should still be open. <clears throat> God will alert you and give you knowledge of what's to come. That's how I'm able to give this word. I was sleeping. But even though I was sleeping, my spiritual ears and eyes were still open. So I was able to see what God is showing me. That's what a prophecy is. God is going before you. So just like a snake, even though they sleep, they are still alert. They still know when something or someone is creeping near them. They are very alert when they are sleeping. And God is saying you should be too, especially in this hour, but all the time. Uh, snakes never stop growing. Snakes, ne they grow all, all the time. They never stop growing. And you guys can look up all of these facts. You should never stop growing and always remain teachable. Be ready for whatever God is showing you. Even if it seems scary, you don't understand it. Whatever the case may be, sit and ask God, what is it that you're trying to show me? What is it that I should do? You should always remain teachable. Never feel like you're so up here. I don't care if you have a ministry with 300 um, subscribers. Never feel like you've made it and you've arrived and you can't be taught anything. You are to always keep growing just like a snake does. Um, snakes also only go to places of productivity. In every garden, there's a snake nearby, okay? In every garden, there's a snake nearby. Snakes go to where things are growing. It's how they eat, it's how they survive. Look at the snake that was in the Garden of Eden. It went, Satan went to where it was productive, to a productive place, to a place of growth, to a garden that was cultivated. Just like here now, naturally, snakes are always going to be near a garden. If there's a garden outside, if there's trees outside, if there's bushes outside, if there's whatever, farms, snakes are nearby. That's why you have garden snakes. They're always going to be found in a place of growth and productivity. Okay, snakes are in all, all 50 states. They're in every state. In every country, there's some kind of snake, maybe a different kind, but there's some kind of snake. They're everywhere. You should always be in a place of productivity and growth, just like snakes do. So I know that was a lot about snakes and what God means by Matthew 10, 16. But a lot of you guys need to hear that for what's about to transpire in these coming days, months, weeks. You need to prepare yourselves. Just like in this dream, I couldn't start screaming, snake, snake, get up. Blah, blah, blah. I had to be wise. I just said, just get up. I had to be wise. But I was also humble. I was as innocent as a dove. I wasn't saying, get up, stupid, da da da, da. Like, I'm trying to tell you what I see, da 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 And I hope y'all are listening to this spiritually. There are things that you can see that this person cannot see, could not see. God is making them aware that these things are happening and that a move has to be made because their way of life is not pleasing to him. It never has been. So that move has to be made. But there are things that you're able to see and discern that these people that are coming back into your life are not. You are there to guide and you are there to be humble. 
as innocent as a dove, but smart as a snake. These are counterfeit spirits, deceptive spirits that have been operating as their neighbors for a very long time. Family, friends, uh, relationships, whatever the case may be. Snakes being portrayed as a dog. And this wasn't a regular dog. This was a big, big black dog. So again, snakes portraying themselves as man's best friend, as a companion, but operating in darkness. It belongs to the neighbors the people that are closest to them. And again, this lady's house that we took this dog back to, this lady had a whole bunch of different kind of animals. Counterfeit spirit operates in different ways. They normally operate with things that people are familiar with. The scene switches and I'm, it's daytime now and I'm in my ex-husband's house and all of these boxes, like his whole house is packed up. And I'm asking him, um, like, when do you need to be out of here? And he's like, I have to be out of here by Sunday. Not, I probably, I may have to be out. I have to be out of here by Sunday. Again, there is a time frame on this move that God is telling them to make. And the house does not necessarily mean a physical move. A house represents the heart of a person. The the things that the the... <laughs> The heart needs to be packed up. The old contents of the heart needs to be packed up. There has to be a move that takes place and there's a time frame on that move. The house can represent their inner man, their soul, their mind, their will, their emotions. They can't reside in that same place anymore. You have to make a move is what God is telling them. You have to make a move and the move has to be made by Sunday. 414 for such a time as this. For some of them, it, it, it's going to start on Sunday, actually 414. But don't look at it as just Sunday. I know for many of them, it's going to, that Sunday marks the start of a huge transition. I am aware of that because I know when God gives me dates, I know what God is saying. There's not, there's not one time that God hasn't given me a time frame for something and it did not happen during that time frame. Not one time. So <laughs> just like his word says, you know a true prophet when what they speak, when what they speak comes to pass. Because God is not a God that will lie. Yes, every prophecy has its time frame. But I remember sharing with you guys, I saw this calendar and I saw promises written across it when I was um, waiting for my job to call me back. And I told you guys, I knew something was going to happen in those days. Then I came back and I testified and I told you guys, I got the job within the, those same few days that I had relayed to you guys prior to. And like I said, when I had a dream back in October and my ex-husband in the dream was like, I'm going to reach out to you. Like this part of my life is about to be over. I'm going to reach out to you in a week. Or no, he said in two weeks. I can't even remember, guys. It was a week or in two weeks. And um, actually, let me look in my phone because I could tell you guys what it was. Hold on. Hold on. I didn't even title it in here. Um, I believe he said, I'm going to reach out to you in two weeks. He said, I'm going to reach out to you in two weeks. And that was, uh, actually, it was September 29th that I had that dream. And in two weeks, was it two weeks? Two weeks or a week, guys. I can't think now that I'm giving you the word, but I told you guys in the beginning of this word. But that time frame in the dream God gave me, from that time frame, from that exact date, my ex-husband reached out to me that exact same day that the Lord had given me in that dream. So again, I know that Sunday, God is making moves. And it's not a, a, a instance in, uh, what am I trying to say, Lord? Help me get these words out for your kids. because This is exhausting sometimes. It's not a case to where God is telling them to, um, you have a choice. You can either leave or stay. No, 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 no. My ex-husband said in the dream, I have to be out by Sunday. Have to, meaning there's no way around it. It must be done by this time frame. 
So again, God had to make a man out of this person or a, a woman out of this person before you could make a husband or a wife out of them. Um, and when I say man, man of God, woman of God, before you can make anything out of them. But again, this is not about your marriage and you walking down the aisle. So please do not start commenting. My husband's coming back and all them. Like I get so sick of seeing all of those. I love marriage and I love love, but stop taking everything to be about you and dun, 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 dun marriage. No, it's about what God is doing in their lives and how he's going to use you to help bring them to him. That is what this is about. Okay. I love love. I'm excited for the marriages. I'm excited for restorations, but don't idolize a marriage and think everything is about you in a white dress and your husband walking away from the counterfeit or your wife walking away from the counterfeit and all these things is for you, you, you. No, this is for God's glory. This is not about a marriage. If you are someone waiting for restoration and God has promised you rest restoration, he's going to deliver on that promise, but please don't idolize marriage or idolize this union. You should be shouting glory that this person's heart is being the, the, the darkness in their heart, the heart of um, stone is being packed in boxes and moved to a different area. Like this, they're, they're packing up these old ways and moving to something new for such a time as this. So again, the Lord is saying they are aware of the deceptive spirits operating around them. They have no choice but to move in a time frame has been given. So that's the word, guys. Um, and in the dream, I also did tell my ex-husband too. I said, or no, I didn't tell him this, but I thought it in my, oh no, I did tell him this in the dream. I said, let me know if you need help. Okay, so just have an open heart, whoever the prodigal, and it's not necessarily a spouse. It could be a prodigal daughter, son, mother, sister. Be of assistance and be ready to help. I said, if you need help, just let me know. But in the dream, I was also, I told you guys, I was wondering how he was making this move so fast. So this is happening swiftly and very quickly. For some of you guys, you're going to be looking at your prodigal mothers, fathers, sisters, brothers, uh, ex-husbands, ex-wives, and you're going to be like, this person was just posting stupid stuff on Facebook, just cursing me out in text, just doing all of these things. But now they're they're coming to me and they're they're um they're they're righteous. They're they they're righteous. They they're different now. How did this just happen this fast? Because they had no choice but to move. Okay, so for some of you guys, you're going to be wondering like. How did they just move this fast? Like I just spoke to them last month and they they were saying the stupidest things to the point I was like, God, what are you even doing over there with them? Like, are you only working on me? Because I don't see no improvement from the last five or 10 years, but it's going to be a swift move because they have no choice but to move. I was wondering how did he just pack up his house and get his house sold? Catch this. How did you just pack up your house and get your house sold this quickly? Like, I just saw you last night and saved you from a snake, bruh. How are you now moving? Your house is sold and you're moving by Sunday. This is happening swiftly. So they may have been one way last week. They're not going to be this way when they come back to you. They may have been one way a year ago, two years ago. They're not going to be this way when they come back to you. And it's going to take you off guard. Like, I was truly baffled in the dream. And I wasn't saying it to him. That's another thing. I wasn't saying it to him. Like, how are you doing this so fast? Like you, how did you even get, I wasn't asking him the questions, but in my head, I was like, how did this just happen so fast? This is happening swiftly, speedily. There's a huge move taking place. So I pray that this made sense to y'all because it was a lot, but I love you guys. I hope you have a great Saturday. I just wanted to get this out um, before this day comes to a close because like I said, I knew 414 was very significant. So yeah. All right. That's all y'all. I love you. I'm grateful for all of you. I hope all of y'all have a great Saturday. Um, I think I'm going to go run some errands and finish packing my house because I have, uh, or my apartment because I had already started packing back in like March. So yeah. I'm going to do some packing today, some more packing. I don't move until June, but y'all, when God tells me I'm moving somewhere, <laughs> that's so funny. I didn't even think about what I just started talking about after this word, but 
Um, I have a bunch of boxes right here against my wall. And in the dream, this was exactly how my ex-husband's house was looking. And it just hit me. Um, I have a bunch of boxes that I have packed already, but that's probably what I'm going to do for the rest of the day. Just organize and get myself together. Um, but I love you guys. I hope you have a great Saturday. Um, yeah, be as wise as serpents and as innocent as doves in this hour. Be smart. Pay attention to what you're saying and what you're doing and just allow God to lead you. Okay? I love y'all. Have a good Saturday. Bye.